Let us start with a prayer. Uh, prayer to God. I bow to Supreme Almighty God. I bow to saints and sages of all the religions. I bow to the lineage of Kriya Yoga masters. I bow to my Gurudev, Baba Hari Haranandaji, and I bow to my Guruji, Baba Pragyanandaji, and I bow to the living power of God abiding within you all. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Today's topic is Kriya Yoga and Breath. We shall discuss how Kriya Yoga and Breath are correlated and how through Breath we can reach the highest state of happiness forever for eternity. First, Kriya Yoga. What is Yoga? Yoga means union. Union of what? Body and soul together is a union. And that union is possible because of the breath. If I close my nose and mouth for more than three or four minutes, there will be no inhalation and no exhalation. And the union of body and soul will not be possible. Soul will leave the body and it will be a dead body. So the union of soul and body or body and soul together because of the breath is yoga. Now Kriya. Kriya is a two words, uh, two syllabus. One is Kri, another one is Ya. Kri means activity, Ya means our inner self or God. So all the activities are possible because of the soul within us, which is breathing constantly through us. When we sleep at night, in deep sleep, we have no body sense. We do not even know where we are, but our inner self, our soul, tirelessly keeps inhaling and exhaling, keeping us alive. So all the activities are done by God. And when, at the present time, many people think that I am body and mind, but we are the eternal soul. Body is born, body dies, but as a soul, we live forever for eternity. And that is what we are. We are the eternal soul. We may know intellectually, but we do not really experience it. But as we progress on our spiritual path, and when we experience that I'm not body, I'm not mind, I'm the eternal soul, that is the highest state of happiness, joy, peace, and bliss. And we want to reach that highest state of happiness. Uh, we, many of us may not even consciously know that, but Unconsciously, everybody wants to reach that highest state of happiness because we have come from God. And God is everlasting joy and happiness for eternity. So we want to, uh, in the Bible it says that we are created in the image of God. So to reach that state, but we, we are uh, ignorant, ignorant of the fact that we are the soul. So this, because of this ignorance we have, because of the, our karma from many, many past lifetimes, because of our many excessive desires, ambitions, because of our many negative qualities, we have a restless mind. So in this life, whatever we are today, whatever restlessness we have in our mind is because of our karma from many, many, many past life. So we do not know that we are in joy and happiness. So we try to find happiness because that desire is there. So we try to find it from external objects, in the worldly objects. So whatever we enjoy through worldly objects, that gives us happiness, but that is temporary. Why? Because what 
because we enjoy the external objects through body and mind, through our mind and body. So whatever we enjoy with our mind is always temporary. It cannot be permanent because it is very nature of the mind is to be restless. It is very nature of the mind is to be not satisfied with anything. So whatever we enjoy through our mind and senses, it is always temporary. So real happiness is with God. But when I use the word God, sometimes it may not be very appropriate to use the word God because men, when you use the word God, many people think of God as some super um, person in high heaven. But God is formless. God has no form. And God is the uh, infinite consciousness. God is peace and calmness. God is pure divine love. God is joy, happiness, bliss forever, for eternity. And we, want, want, we all want to reach that state, but God is not in our mind. God is beyond mind, beyond thoughts. So if we want to reach that higher state of happiness, it is quite obvious that we want to go beyond mind, we have to go beyond thoughts. So we have to control our thoughts in the mind. But this mind is not easy to control. We call it monkey mind because it is very difficult to control the mind. There are many ways to control the mind. One way is to try to live a conscious life, try to live a pure divine life, Try to uh, practice non-attachment. Okay, so there are many ways, and another way is to observe the breath. Out of all this, the um, and that is done through the practice of pranayama. So pranayama is the most effective way to control the thoughts in the mind and go beyond mind and beyond mind, beyond thoughts is God that is joy, peace, happiness for, and bliss for eternity. Now, uh, it is not easy to reach that state because we have made our mind so restless over the period of many lifetimes because of our karma, because of our desires, because of our negative qualities. So it takes time to control the mind. We can control it, and Kriya Yoga is the easiest way. Prana, practicing pranayama is the quickest way to reach that state of happiness. But it takes time uh, because uh, you know uh, in uh, Hatha Yoga Pradipika, Pradipika, it is written. Chale vate chalam chittam, nischale nischalam bhavet, yogi sthanatvam aknoti tato vayam nirodayat. So it says, chale vate chalam chittam. When the breath is restless, mind is restless. Nischale nischalam bhavet, when breath becomes slow, tranquil, and uh, feeble, mind becomes peaceful and calm. Nishchala, nishchalam bhavet. Yogi sthanatvam aknoti. And yogi lives long life. Tato vayum nirodhaya. Therefore, one should try to control the breath. Uh, one should try to regulate the breath. So, as we say that mind is difficult to control. Why? Because our yogis saw that mind is very subtle and it is very difficult to control the mind. But breath is gross. It is much easier to control the breath. 
So they say, why to try to control the mind? Because it is very subtle. Monkey mind is very difficult to control. So let us instead control the breath, where it is much easier. So if we can control the breath, we can reach the, we can slowly, gradually control our thoughts, reduce our thoughts, increase the quality of thoughts, decrease the quantity of thoughts, and you can go beyond mind and to the highest state of happiness. Now, Baba Hariyaranji used to say that there are 50 types of breaths. Out of that 49 are for restlessness and one breath, which is the slow, feeble and tranquil breath, that is the breath for God realization. Now, as I said that controlling the mind, it takes time because of our karma for many, many lifetimes. But if you practice Kriya Yoga, there are two immediate benefits. Or when we practice Kriya Pranayama particularly, there are two immediate benefits. So let us just go through that quickly. Uh, first benefit is that if you practice Pranayama, we can live longer and healthier life. Let us see this through some examples. A normal healthy living person takes about 15 inhalations per minute. But when the person becomes busy in sexual activity, his pace of inhalation increases from uh, 15 to anywhere from 20 to 30 inhalations per minute. When he becomes angry, he breaths, breathes even faster. He takes anywhere from 30 to 40 inhalations per minute. And heart attack may happen come because of the extreme anger. Now, if you look at the elephant, elephant takes 10 inhalations per minute. And it is said that elephants lives more than 100 years. Crocodile. Crocodile takes only four inhalations per minute. And it is said that crocodile lives more than 150 years. Now, if you have seen crocodile, you can see, sometimes you wonder because it is so still, not moving at all. And it is so still that sometimes you wonder, is crocodile alive or dead? Because crocodile is very still waiting for the prey. And when he sees the prey, he jumps over it and gets the prey. So crocodile takes four inhalations and those stillness of the breath is reflected in the stillness of his mind. And the stillness of the mind is reflected in the stillness of the body. So uh, when we sleep at night, our pace of inhalation and exhalation goes down to anywhere from uh, about, about 10 inhalations per minute. So after the deep sleep, when we wake up in the morning, we are fully refreshed and energized. Now, when you look at the dog, you see how the dog breathes. He brought, takes very quick and shallow breath. A few years back, I was uh, in, in Cali, uh, in uh, in Colombia, and uh, they had two. The host where I was staying, they had two large dogs. They were outside, and I was looking at the dogs through the glass glass door. And uh, these dogs were lying on the floor, and their body was moving up and down, up and down with the tongue out. So they were breathing very fast with the tongue out. And so, how long dog lives? And about 12 years, 12 to 14 years. Occasionally, they may live 20 years. So from all these examples, we can see that if our breath is slow and tranquil, we can live longer life and healthier life. Second benefit of uh, practicing pranayama is that uh, we can increase the power of concentration. And we need the power of concentration 
to get success, not only in the spiritual life, but also in the worldly life. We get success by practicing Kriya Pranayama. Now, uh, you, many of you may know about Patanjali. He was a sage about 5,000 years ago, and he uh, made yoga, meditation, uh, more popular at that time, about 5,000 years ago, in the time of Mahabharata. He wrote a book called Yoga Sutra Patanjali, uh, in which uh, divided into, it is divided into four, four chapters. First chapter is uh, <clears throat> Samadhi Pada, which is yoga and its aim. Second one is Sadhana Pada, which is the yoga and its practice. Third one is Vibhuti Pada, yoga and uh, spiritual powers. And last one, fourth one is Kaivalya Pada, uh, that is liberation. So in the second and third chapter, he's talking about Ashtanga Yoga, eight limbs of yoga. So they are Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara, Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi. So in the so first five limbs are in the second chapter, Sadhana Pada. And the last three, Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi, they are in the third chapter, which is the Vibhuti Pada. So if you can see that limbs are Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyara, Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi. So Pranayama is one of the limbs Patanjali is talking about, and it is the fourth limb. So we shall discuss this Pranayama a little bit because he's talking about Pranayama from verse number 49 to 53. And here he is describing what is Pranayama, uh, what are the different uh, aspects of Pranayama, and what are the benefits of Pranayama. So in verse number 49, he says, Tasmin Sati Svasa Pravasa Yoho Kati Vichyadaha Pranayama. So Pranayama, he says, regulation of breath. He says that pranayama is the break in the flow of breath in inhalation and exhalation. So Sage describes pranayama as a break in inhalation and exhalation. And he says in pranayama, we go from gross or physical aspect of sadhana to a subtle aspect, which is the breath, from body to breath. So uh, cessation of breath or the retention of breath gives us the blissful taste of death. When we practice pranayama, the fear of death goes away. So that is the first one. Now second sutra number 50, this is in chapter number two, which says Bhaya Vyantara Stambravuktihi Desakala Sankhya Bihi Paridrashto Dirga Sukhsmaha. So he described here three aspects of pranayama. <clears throat> Exhalation, inhalation, Bhaya Vyantara. Stambravuktihi, cessation of breath, retention of breath. So he says that these three aspects of pranayama Exhalation, inhalation, and cessation of breath are regulated by desa, by place, by we are regulating through our chakras, kala, by time. Now, different people have different capacity. Some people can hold breath for a longer time. Some people can hold breath for a shorter time. Some people can take long inhalation and long exhalation. Some people cannot do that. So we are controlling or regulating our inhalation and exhalation through time. And then this is Sankhya Bihi number. So in, uh, we, control, we take the cycle of Kriya Pranayama, generally there are 12 rotations. So we are controlling or regulating these three types of Pranayama by place, time, and number. And, and this pranayama can be 
subtle or prolonged. Now, uh, in the verse number 51, he says, Bhaiya Vyantaraha Visayakshepi Chaturthaha. He says there is a fourth type of pranayama which goes beyond the sphere of inhalation and exhalation. So the sage here speaks of the fourth type of pranayama. This pranayama goes beyond exhalation and inhalation. It is called Kevala Kumbhaka, special technique of pranayama. In this pranayama, there is neither inhalation nor exhalation, not even forcibly holding the breath. It is a natural suspension of breath. And this state one can achieve through the sincere practice of Kriya. So, so see, this is the fourth type of pranayama where there is no exhalation, no inhalation, not even forcing, forcibly holding the breath. It is a natural suspension of breath. So when we attain this fourth type of pranayama, what happens? We can see that I'm not in the body, but I'm still alive. I'm the soul. We can actually perceive, experience that I'm the eternal soul. I'm not body and mind. I just live in the body whenever I want. So when we come to that realization, when we come to that experience, then we can have no fear of death. We can reach the highest state of happiness. It takes a long, long, long time, maybe many weeks, many months, many years, or even many lifetimes to reach that higher state of uh, pranayama. But one will reach that through sincere practice of Kriya. Now, I can give you an example. Uh, in the year 2015 or 2016, I was uh, teaching in Australia and I was in uh, Brisbane, Australia. So after the program, one mother came and she told me that one day when she was meditating, suddenly she realized, she actually experienced that she was not breathing. She did not possibly hold the breath. She just suddenly realized that well, if she's meditating and she's not breathing and she was not uncom uncomfortable. She was completely com comfortable and she was feeling lots of um, happiness. So much so that she was feeling peace, joy and happiness and she did not want to breathe again. It was such a happy, blissful state. But then a thought came in her mind. That if I don't breathe, I will die. And if I die, what will happen to my daughter? As soon as that thought came, she started breathing again. So she was asking me that if something like this happens again, what should she do? I told her that when something like this happens again, love God, love gurus, thank them for giving you this stage, you are not going to die. By the grace, you got this experience, which is the uh, experience of, uh, we get the glimpse of, glimpse of highest state of happiness, which is complete peace, joy, happiness forever, for eternity. So you got the glimpse of highest state of happiness during this time. So you're so fortunate that God gave you that experience. So you will, you are not going to die from that. So when that state comes, enjoy it and love God and Gurus. Thank them for giving you that experience. Baba Hariranji, he also um, says that breath control is self-control. Breath mastery is self-mastery. Breathless stage is deathless stage. You can very easily see why he's saying that. 
because breath control is self-control. As I discussed before, that he said 50 types of breath, 49 are for restlessness. When we become angry, we breathe very fast. So there's a different type of breath when we become um, depressed, different types of breath when um, we feel unhappiness, different types of breath when we are, we are uh, experiencing many negative qualities. But the 50th breath, which is the slow, tranquil, feeble breath, that is the breath for God realization. So, and, so we can see that by controlling the breath, by making our breath slow, tranquil, and feeble, we can control ourselves. We can get the control on the self. Breath mastery is self mastery. So by mastering our breath, by controlling the breath, we can get the mastery on our own self. We will not get angry that easily. We will not become upset that easily. We will not have, uh, we'll slowly become free from negative qualities. We will not become depressed that easily. So, so that is the and that is why I say that breath control is self-control, breath mastery is self-mastery. And then he says that breathless stage is deathless stage. As I described just before, that when we reach the highest stage of deep meditation, breath may stop naturally. Naturally, it will be natural suspension of breath. And that gives us the extremely peaceful and joyful state uh, of samadhi. So that's why, and we will, we can see that I'm living, my body is dead, there is no breath, no heartbeat, nothing. People think that my body is dead, but I am alive, I'm living, I'm the eternal soul, and I can go in the body whenever I want. So that is the breathless stage is deathless stage. Now, uh, you know, Guruji, after Gyananji, used to come, to uh, Cincinnati, uh, about twice a year to do the Kriya program. And uh, after the program, whenever he has time, he will go upstairs in his bedroom and on his bed, he will sit down and write books. He is constantly writing bread, book. So whenever I used to go to him to ask some questions in, in his bedroom, I would see him writing the book with your right hand, but the left hand will be like this. So I was always wondering why he's uh, keeping his left hand right here. So one day I asked, I asked him, Baba, why you're keeping your fingers, or particularly the index fingers near your nose? So he told me that I'm trying to see whether any warm air is coming out or not. So even while writing breath, writing the book, his breath was almost non non-existent. So that gives the power of concentration. Now, uh, in Bhagavad Gita, chapter five, verse twenty-seven, Lord Krishna is telling Arjuna, "Prana pana samokrutva." Nasa abhyantar charinam. He says that when we reach a higher state of spirituality or prana apana, they become equal. Samakrutva, they become equal. Nasa abhyantar charinam. And when we are in the deep state of meditation, the breath roams inside the nostril. In other words, the breath goes from nostril to fontanel. It never comes out. So nasa abhyantar charinam, the breath, the breath just moves in the nostril, not coming out. So that is the state or of highest happiness and that is the fourth type of breath or fourth type of kriya pranayama. pranayama. Now, uh, Guruji described uh, our spiritual progress with uh, three stages 
of our consciousness. So first, now he is here. It is very tricky, you know, here he is playing with the words. And the word he's playing with is forget. So he says the very first stage of consciousness is, so you try to listen very carefully and try to understand that. He says that first stage is we are forgetting that we are forgetting. What does he mean? He says we are forgetting to watch our breath. We are forgetting to be conscious of the breath. And we are forgetting that we are forgetting. So we are not remembering that, but we don't even realize that I'm not watching my breath. So we are forgetting that we are forgetting, we are forgetting. So that is the first stage. And most of the people in this world are living in this first stage of consciousness. But as we pray and meditate, when we do more pranayama, we go to the next stage, which he says, we are not forgetting that we are forgetting. So we are not forgetting that we are forgetting. So we are watching our breath, maybe for a minute or two, and suddenly mind goes somewhere else. We forget to watch our breath. And then when we realize, oh, I forgot to wash my breath, we again wash the breath. Again, we forget. So we are aware that I'm trying to wash my breath, but I keep forgetting. I watch for some time and then I forget. So that's why he says the second stage of spiritual growth through the point of view of consciousness is I'm not forgetting that I'm forgetting. And then we go into Transi transition into the third level of consciousness. And there he says, we are not forgetting that we are not, we are not, we don't forget that we are not forgetting. So he says that we are constantly observing the breath, constantly aware of consciousness of the breath. We are con constantly conscious of the breath and we always know and we are always aware that I'm completely conscious of my breath all the time, every moment. So we are not, we don't forget that we are not forgetting. And that is the highest state of consciousness. And that, that's when uh, we will experience the breathless stage, still living, but experiencing breathless stage. So that is the fourth type of breath. And when we do uh, Kriya Yoga meditation, we are trying to attain this type of pranayama. I probably, you might have guessed uh, which state it is. It is the step number seven, which is the paravastha meditation or silent meditation. In this meditation, we are trying to attain that fourth type of pranayama. We are trying, we are not actually attaining. We have to reach much higher level, but we are trying because when we do, the first six steps that will prepare our body field to go into the seventh step of deep meditation. So it is a state which naturally comes by the practice of first six steps. And that state is breathless stage. Eventually it will take us to the breathless stage when we practice, try to practice paravastha silent meditation. Now in verse number 52, he says that 52 and 53, these two verses, he's talking about uh, benefits of practicing pranayama. He says in verse number 52, he says, Tataha Kshiyate Prakasha Avaranam. So now Prakasha, Prakasha means light. What, which light he's talking about? The, self, the soul is self-luminous. So light of the soul is yes, Prakasa. He's talking about that. Prakasa Avaranam. Avaranam means covering. So covering of the light. So what covering it is? It is our ignorance. So light of the soul is covered by ignorance. 
and tatahakshiyate, that covering is eliminated. So he says, when you practice Kriya Pranayama, the covering of light is eliminated. Covering um, of the light of the soul is removed, is destroyed. Now, this, this particular verse is so important that two saints wrote a commentary on this, on this verse. Uh, Sage Vyasadeva, he wrote a commentary. He says that karma of the yogi covers up this discriminative knowledge and that is destroyed as one practices pranayama. He says, uh, karma of the yogi binds him uh, to the pain of repeated death, repeated birth, repeatedly going through life, worries, anxiety, stress, pain of um, pain in the body, pain of old age, pain of uh, disease, sickness, and pain of death. We go through this pain of birth and death and living in the life. Life after life after life, we are suffering like that because of our karma. But he says that this karma of the yogi becomes weak by practicing pranayama every moment. And ultimately, it is all this karma is destroyed. And so it is said that there is no purifying action higher than pranayama. I said before that uh, we can purify ourselves in many ways. Some is like practicing non-attachment, uh, consciously living the life. There are many other ways, but he says that pranayama is the highest. There is no other purifying action higher than pranayama. Thus, the light of knowledge will shine. Another sage, Manu, he said that sins can be eliminated by the practice of pranayama. We can become free from all our sins by the practice of pranayama. So pranayama not only destroys our ignorance, but, but it also gives us the clarity of perception and which keeps our mind and intel intellect sound and healthy. So this is the benefit of practicing pranayama. And in verse number 53, he says, dhanas, dhanasu cha yogyataha manasaha. He says the mind is restless. Mind is not fit for concentration. Dhanasu means concentration. Yogya means, yogyataha means fit. Fitness, manasaha mind. So mind uh, actually is not fit for concentration, but by practicing pranayama, mind becomes fit for concentration. So he says that when we practice pranayama, we slowly remove all our impurities from our mind. Mind becomes peaceful and calm. Mind attains the deeper concentration and our ignorance goes away and we get the knowledge, we get the highest state of realization, highest state of happiness. Now, uh, you know, and another thing also that we, Mm, this pranayama gives success, not only spiritual life, because it takes us to the highest state of realization, but it also gives us success in the worldly life. Uh, if you look, look at the successful people in this world, maybe a very successful cricket player or successful football player or a very successful artist or very successful professional, they are in different fields, but there is one thing in common. They all have tremendous power of concentration. And because of that power of concentration, they have become successful in life. So if 
in the highest state of happiness, samadhi state or uh, self-realization comes. It takes time. It takes up. It depends. You know, uh, depends upon our karma and how much effort we make to progress on spiritual path. It depends on depends on that. But it takes time. But we can attain success in even in worldly life by practicing pranayama. So pranayama is so important that we should practice as much pranayama as possible. Paramahansa Yogananda also said that one cycle of kriya pranayam done properly, it will remove one year of our negative karma. And we suffer in this life only because of our negative karma. So if we, let's say we practice 10 cycles of kriya pranayama every day. So every day we will become free from 10 years of our negative karma. So it will enhance our spiritual progress by, pran by pranayama. And our, uh, no, it has been described by yogis that if we can practice 100 and 144 pranayama per day, we can reach a very <clears throat> deep level of concentration and meditation, and you can attain realization in very quickly in just few years. Maybe Lairi Masa, I think, um, don't quote me on that, but I think he said about 14 years time, uh, we can attain realization if we can practice 144 cycles of pranayama every day for 14 years. Now, it is not practical for us because one cycle of pranayama takes five minutes. We can, and the 12 cycles of pranayama will take one hour, okay? And we should not practice more than 12 cycles continuously. So then we have to take rest for half an hour or so and then practice another 12 cycles. If you do like that, 144 cycles will take about 18 hours. So that is not practical for us. But this tells us that how powerful Kriya Pranayama is. By practicing Kriya Pranayama, we can very quickly attain uh, purity. We can gradually become free from our ignorance and reach the highest state of happiness very quickly. That is the relative term because, you know, um, in the normal uh, state of living life, it takes 400,000 human lives. So it is like 400,000 human lives. But our masters say that if we can practice Kriya Pranayama and meditation every day sincerely, pray to God, meditate, and try to live conscious life, we can attain the highest state of happiness, uh, the self-realization, anywhere from one to three lifetimes, instead of going through 400,000 lifetimes. So this is the benefit of practicing Kriya Pranayama. So I will, I will uh, request to you, you know, that please practice as many cycles of Pranayama as you can. You don't have to, <clears throat> you can practice Pranayama two or three cycles with your regular meditation, but then, Whenever you have some time, practice pranayama. So if you practice pranayama, because you just practice pranayama, nothing else. So that way you can practice more pranayama per day and quickly progress on spiritual path. So thank you very much. Uh, let us uh, conclude with the prayer. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha, Sarve Santu Niramayaha, Sarve Bhadrani Pasyantu, Makaschit Dukha Bhagavave. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha, may everybody be happy. Sarve Santu Niramayaha, may everybody be healthy. Sarve Bhadrani Pasyantu, may everybody see auspicious sight. May, there, may no one have a share in sorrow and suffering. Everybody be happy, healthy, joyful, peaceful, and calm.
So with this, uh, let us now start uh, with our meditation, which will be the general meditation for 15 minutes. So I'll guide and you just listen to me and practice meditation. It is not Kriya meditation, but but uh, it is the uh, general meditation. So please sit straight, keep your back straight, close your eyes and breathe normally. Normal breath, breath is going in, breath is coming out. Just be conscious of the breath. Watch. Breath is going in. Watch, breath is coming out. Concentrating between the two eyebrows. Go about three to four inches inside your head from the midpoint between the two eyebrows. Concentrating inside your head, observe the breath. Breath is going in, breath is coming out. Watch your breath. Observe the breath. Be conscious of the breath with love. Breath is God. Vayuhu Pratyaksa Devata. So observe the breath with love. Deep concentration. Be very alert. Do not allow any thoughts in your mind. If the thought comes, just observe the thought. It will pass by. Keep observing the breath. If you continuously observe the breath, concentrating between the two eyebrows, thought will not come. Now, take slow, long, deep inhalation. Bring peace within. Slow, long, deep exhalation. Spread pure love around you. Slow, long, deep inhalation. Bring peace within, slow, long, deep exhalation, spread pure love around you. Slow, long, deep inhalation, bring peace within, slow, long, deep exhalation, give love to others. Slow, long, deep inhalation. Bring peace within. Slow, long, deep exhalation. Give pure love to others. Slow, long, deep inhalation. Bring peace within. Slow, long, deep exhalation. Give pure love to others. Slow, long, deep inhalation. Bring peace within. Slow, long, deep exhalation. Give pure love to others. Slow, long, deep inhalation. Bring peace within. Slow, long, deep exhalation. Give pure love to others. Now, take slow, long, deep inhalation. Bring peace within. Hold your breath 
holding the breath, bend forward as much as you can. Exhale, normal breathing. Remain in a bending position. Breathe normally, but concentrating three to four inches or eight to nine centimeters, seven to nine centimeters inside your head, near the soul center. Concentrate there. At the same time, observing your breath. Remain conscious of your breath. Love your breath. Breath is God. Love him. Meditate with love. Because God is love. God is pure divine love. Love him. Observing the breath, concentrating between the two eyebrows, three to four inches inside your head, or seven to nine centimeters inside. Be very alert. Do not allow any thoughts in the mind. Continuously watch the breath so you cannot get thoughts. If a thought comes, just to observe the thought, it will pass by. Feel that peace, calmness. God is peace. God is calmness. Meditate with love. God is love. Observing breath. Breath is God. God is love. Now take slow, long, deep inhalation. <clears throat> Hold the breath. <clears throat> Holding the breath. <clears throat> Slowly sit up and exhale. Normal breathing. Concentration is between the two eyebrows, three to four inches in four inches inside, or seven to nine centimeters inside. Concentrating in the soul center. Keep observing the breath. Breath is going in. Breath is coming out. Normal breathing. Feel that peace and calmness. Concentrate deeply in the soul center. Those people who are practicing meditation for some time, they may can hear the inner sound, divine sound. If you hear the divine sound, also listen to the divine sound, observing the breath. Concentrating between the two eyebrows. Now take slow, long, deep inhalation. Bring pure love within. Slow, long, deep exhalation. Spread peace around you. Slow, long, deep inhalation. Bring pure love within, 
slow, long, deep exhalation, give peace to others. Slow, long, deep inhalation, bring pure divine love within. Slow, long, deep exhalation, give peace and calmness to others. Slow, long, deep inhalation, bring pure divine love within. Slow, long, deep exhalation. Give peace and calmness to others. Slow, long, deep inhalation. Bring pure divine love within. Slow, long, deep exhalation. Give peace and calmness to others. Slow, long, deep inhalation. Bring pure divine love within you. Slow, long, deep exhalation. Give peace and calmness to others. Slow, long, deep inhalation. Bring pure love within. Slow, long, deep exhalation. Give peace and calmness to others. Now normal breathing. Concentrating between the two eyebrows. Three to four inches inside your head or seven to nine centimeters inside near the soul center. Observe the breath. Be conscious of the breath. Normal breathing. Breath is going in, breath is coming out. Just observe the breath, concentrating between the two eyebrows. Feel that peace and calmness. Gurudev says, calmness is godliness. Continuous attention in breath and between the two eyebrows in the soul center with love. Meditation with love. If you have attained little deeper meditation, you can observe that your breath has become very slow, feeble and tranquil. This is the breath that will take us to God realization, to highest state of happiness forever, for eternity. 
practice more and more pranayama, that will enhance our spiritual progress. Practice of as many cycles of pranayama as possible, conscious living, prayer, and meditation every day with love and faith. We can attain the highest state of happiness, self-realization very quickly, rel relatively speaking, instead of 400,000 lifetimes in just one to three lifetimes, maximum one to three, if we do this. Thank you. God bless you all. I bow to you all, to the living power of God abiding in all of you. Ciao. Bye-bye.